Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Heroes of the Storm. It's all Sylvanas time now, and so we're going to look at a couple ways to build her. Uh, I, my rules for doing these builds are typically not to reuse talents, and again, they are builds that might be a bit extreme to one side or the other, and so not terribly balanced, and may not work very well in the real world, but I like to kind of explore the talent system in Heroes of the Storm, just see what we can do. And so for Sylvanas, what we're going to do is we're going to try and focus on a uh, more of a player versus player type build and then possibly a versus creep type build because Sylvanas is perfect for a little bit of both. So we're going to start with this being the anti-player build. And we're going to go with... Uh, some of these choices are going to be a little bit difficult. But we can do either Lost Soul for reduced uh, uh, cooldown on the dagger or increase withering fire range, right? Those are really going to be the two that are going to be anti-player. The uh, reduced shadow dagger cooldown is really great since it will be adding a vulnerability to it later. But combat usually is fairly quick in this game. And you usually don't have a full 8 seconds unless you're in a big group fight and you're moving around. So it's one of those things where, especially since we reduce the range of the dagger, uh, we might go with increased withering fire range by 25%. That gets the dagger and uh, the uh, with the wind. Uh, the dagger and the withering fire will have about the same range because one's increased and the other's de decreased, and that kind of makes them overlap. Not only that, but getting the increased range really helps you get that damage out there uh, on the enemy. Uh, a bit further, like to try and get into that range where you can do damage to them a little bit quicker. Otherwise, it might hit uh, minions or something like that. So, be told, I'm more than likely going to go with with the wind. I'm going to start with that, get the range increase, so we can early on just start kind of pelting enemies from a range that they might not uh, be comfortable with. At uh, rank four, we want to get well. I'm thinking Ranger's Ambush. You would think in Venom, right? And that's not bad. A lot of uh, I've seen a lot of assassin type uh, Sylvanas do that. But the problem with Venom is that it kind of tapers off at the end. So we'll go with the Ranger's Ambush, which if we teleport, we can recharge Withering Fire and just blast them all again, which is a lot of damage. Beyond that, we go to seven, and this one it, it can be tough. Follow through is good. It's additional damage, and you can keep procking it and keep procking it. But at the same time, we're kind of squishy, so Shadow Form would be a good alternative. For this, we're going to do, though, I'm going to go ahead and do Follow Through. And increase my damage by 25% with each ability. And try and maybe stagger those arrows to see if we can't make that work. At rank 10, because we are going anti-player, we definitely want Wailing Arrow. It does a lot of damage, and it silences, which is perfect for killing a bunch of heroes and taking out healers. Going on to 13... A black arrow slows heroes is really one of the best options. Now, I talked about this a bit in her overview. Uh, verse, the verses of slowing the enemy, which takes longer, or uh, increasing your own speed, which doesn't take as long. But this one can put you more in harm's way. Uh, something I didn't talk about, and I regret, say, uh, regret so, is that slowing the enemy down also incurs uh, the use of Executioner, because enemies that are slowed or rooted take more damage. Now, unfortunately, so, well, or fortunately, depending upon your view, and I, I actually am I'm glad she doesn't have it, uh, Executioner would probably make Sylvanas just a bit too powerful. So she doesn't have it, but she can proc it for other people. And since it's uh, Black Arrows applies the slow, it means you can actually slow the entire enemy group with your dagger, which automatically triggers Executioner, and not only that, but I'll be making them vulnerable, so they'll be taking Executioner damage plus the vulnerable damage. This is probably where Sylvanas is the most overpowered when it comes to that, because I any team that can coordinate around that will do an insane amount of burst in an AoE. And that is probably something I don't quite agree with, but we're going to give it a go for this. Alright, level 16. Uh, we're going to get Cold Embrace. I mean, that's just, yeah, uh, Dagger's going to make enemies vulnerable. Now, this is something I would definitely recommend for the anti-creep build, uh, but we'll probably have to get something else, because really, when you're looking at anti-player, this is the best option. Uh, I mean, uh, you could go possibly Will of the Forsaken. Th these are both good for both builds. Will of the Forsaken is a way to get out of combat, should you need it, or even to chase, honestly. Uh, so both would be good, but we're looking to kill players, and that's more damage, 25% more damage, and that's a lot. 
at 20, well, we're going to get Deafening Blast. That is increasing the range of the arrow, or not increasing the range, but uh, increasing the damage in the center of the arrow and doubling the silence, which will decimate a lot of players. So we'll take a look at that and we'll see how it works. Victory for the Forsaken! For combat. All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Dragonshire. And yes, I, I am recording on April Fools, so you're going to see some big heads. Uh, you are going to see some big heads. Uh, Zeratul's got a big one here, and battle commencing in ten seconds. We, we don't do we? We have an Illidan. Where's our Illidan? Five, four. Oh, he's way back three. here. Two, um one Done. let the battle begin are you letting Illidan by <laughs> himself afraid of me all right so what do we got here let's see if I'm gonna want anti-hero or creep oh probably gonna want a little more anti-hero because I do have a Malfurion we do not have any uh, a healer so all right <clears throat> anti-hero build it is oh geez withering fire range yes please let me help you All right, let's just actually use that to hit the line and do a little bit of black arrow damage. Really? The ancient shrines awaken. Control them. There tool, we need to hit that hammer. There it is. There's the damage we want. There it is. Uh oh. Enemy Sylvanas, it's okay. She can't really take me out at this point. We'll get away. But we got hammer. That's the important part. That's the thing that matters, right? From my revenge fueled soul. Zeratul. Be careful down there, mate. I think you're doing okay. Oh no, hammer's back. That is the master skin hammer, too. A hero has abandoned the battle. A hero has rejoined the battle. Okay, there's a little bit of damage. I, I I wasn't going for the teleport. I was actually just going for the damage. If they weren't so close to the tower, I might have actually teleported in. But not a big deal. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Just the holding of the creep line here. I already know they're in there, so... Alright, using that as a uh, deterrent... There we go. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like we've got a Jaina that's having issues. Alright, so we're going to get uh, refresh charges of Withering Fire, which is going to allow us to just come in here, do a bunch of damage, teleport, and do an another bunch of damage with the Withering Fire, as you can see there. Just look at that, just double that up. Of course. That is really strong because you get a lot of burst out of that. You know, uh, a lot of the characters don't show it on their character select screen, but you can see the big heads are actually in the playable game. Just the character select screen. When I did the April Fool's Mario joke video, um, not all the characters were uh, noticeable with it. Apparently, it's more so in game. All right, Dragon Knight is pushing. Excellent. He's pushing up top. Now, this is my anti-player uh, build, but I'm going to go ahead and push a little bit against uh, this creep here. Alright, that one's out of ammo. I'm just going to keep hitting this one so that it doesn't fire. And I'm going to try and split push, because that's one thing that Sylvanas can definitely do very well. Alright, uh, follow through. 
additional damage after we use abilities. So here I can actually keep attacking, withering fire, I get an additional damage on the next attack, and I can just kind of weave it in and out of my abil of um, my shots. So every time I fire, I can hit another one. And since I get a withering shot with every single minion kill, I mean, it's real easy to keep that going. Now what I've noticed when it comes to attacking these, uh, these keeps... I'm gonna go ahead and back off a little bit. There we go. If you're gonna try and get into a keep's range, one of the best things you can do is uh, throw your dagger first, because your dagger's got enough range to where you can hit the keep before the keep starts targeting you. And then you can put the tower into lockdown before you get in range, and then the tower can't hit you at all. If you try to go in and auto-attack a keep... Fate demands this one's death. If you, if you try and go and auto-attack a keep, you're going to just end up uh, getting hit first, and keeps slow down your uh, attack speed, which... Uh, makes it very difficult to continue your... Pr I mean, you're, you're going to basically be slowed down enough to where you're going to take a couple hits first, uh, but eventually then you'll put it in the lockdown. Now again, I feel like Jaina's just a little bit too strong with that. It's just way too easy for her to lock down a tower, and I'm thinking that maybe she just needs to lose the Black Arrow on the auto attack. Alright. Let's go get him. Thank you, Zeratul. You are wonderful. Wailing Arrow. All right, we're doing good. We're doing good. All right, well, now he's silenced, unfortunately. He can't hide in his keep now. Get him. Oh well. Let's go ahead and put the black arrow on the line and that will hit everybody including Hammer. Oh no you don't. Oh my. Um, yes. That was beautiful. It's very rare that I actually get some pretty good plays when I'm trying these kind of builds, and today I am lucking out. It is obviously April Fool's Day, because April Fool's, Kage is playing like a boss. Oh, that poor, poor demon hunter. Goodbye, Vala. We hardly knew ye. Everybody's pushing for the weekend. All right, let's teleport to refuel my arrows there. All right, I'm here to help you guys. We're going to go ahead and black arrow this fort. It is not going to go anywhere. Now, I know the most optimal way to use this follow-through is to just w hold my fire on every uh, until I shoot, but it really... Um, It's really not easy to do, and when you got the burst, you might as well use it. And, and truthfully, even though I might not get it on every shot, I'm still getting a good amount of uh, follow-through happening. What are we if not slaves to this tournament? All right, I'm just going to throw that back in order to put down the black arrow and to kind of hurt them. Oh. Oh, I hit her. I hit her. Oh, no. Careful, Illidan. Take her out. There you go. Excellent. Three of them down. Only two of us are down. You guys are doing fantastic. How is everybody doing? My siege damage is up there, as you would expect from a Sylvanas. My damage is not terrible. I'm only below zero tool. Well, you know, Jaina. Look at that. Hero damage. Jaina doing some serious work out there. I mean, her aside, I'm doing pretty good. Um, she's must be... Uh, she kept saying it's unplayable, but damn. Go Jaina. Alright, so even though we're anti-player, we're still going to do what we do best. I've kind of already shown how you can cut off the mercenaries. 
and do a bunch of damage to them. Now, I'm not as good as doing this to the, um, bruiser, uh, the bruiser camps, but I certainly can try. All right. Uh oh. Oh no 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 no. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. Ow. And take your revenge, hero. That sucks. Ow. To die again already. Well, there goes Rainer. We got hammer. That's the important thing. Hammer not being able to see just from a distance. That's a master hammer. When you're dealing with a hammer that's been playing for a while, you got to be careful because they usually know how to keep their distance. And yeah, well, th you know, that's not, oh, let's be honest, that doesn't necessarily mean that's true, but this is a person that feels confident enough in Hammer to buy a Master Skin, so, yeah, you know, it's a thing, it's a thing. There's Jaina, she's kind of hurting, but I think she'll probably be okay. Alright, so let's do this, let's uh, grab some mercenaries to throw at the enemy. Again, kind of showing that off where I can hit one and a target the other. Alright, Shadow Dagger makes the enemies vulnerable. So let's go ahead and throw that now. And you can see that it bounced and now both of them are vulnerable. But I'm just going to use that to my advantage. Do not test my Vengeance is near. Well, we can't get the Bruiser Camp this time, but that's okay. We're going to move forward. Uh, I will be, once again, split pushing. It's one of those things you kind of have to wonder sometimes. Is it better to split push? Or is it better to... Push together? I mean, when you've got a character like Sylvanas who can split push so well, it's really hard to say which option is better. And you can kind of see, even, even now, I can still just do well against mercenaries because Withering Fire just continually regenerates. Let's, uh... Oh, let's there we go. Now I can hit both of them. Withering Fire just works so well to, um... Stop these mercenaries. I get, uh, I get a new charge every time I kill one of them. Or the creep line. And you can just see how well it's working. Alright. An enemy keep has fallen. It's time to even the skies. Oh, yes. Go Jaina. I didn't even see how she did that. That was a lot of damage. What the hell did she do? God damn, that damage she's doing. Jeez, go Jaina. Like, let's, look, let's look at her player damage. 33,000. I have to say, I have not really seen that many Jainas be able to pull that off. Just look at that. A constant barrage of Withering Fire, and I'm not even built for that. Well, we're not going to get to level 20, and as you can see here, Black Arrow does not stop the, uh, does not stop the core. Uh oh, hammer is gonna come after me. Oh nice. Power gathers within the unleash the dragon's wrath. Nice. To the death. Bash on your final tire. I'm listening. May my aim Aha! Gotcha with my arrow. That keep is no more. Choose a talent. No, we're fine. Free the Dragon Knight. All right, so we'll get increase the power of the center. I'm here. I'm here. I don't know what's with this guy. It's so odd. All right, should I try one? Should I try one? Let's see how it works, right? Alright, uh, let's 
see, which one's targeted? The one... Okay, so I can still shut one down. So as you can see, I'm, I can't shut them all down, but I can still shut two of them down, so I'm like hardly taking any damage from this. So even this... Even that was easy for Sylvanas. She just jungles so well. She may not have the punch of some other junglers to kill them as quickly, but I mean, seriously, when you're really just not worried about taking damage from the camps, who cares? And there we go, Dragon Knight is up, we've got a bruiser camp at the top, and we're going to have uh, this siege camp at the bottom. And I'll push in the middle. This is it, this is a good game, ladies and gentlemen. I feel for the enemy team. They tried, and... Uh, I mean, that hammer really was doing some good work against us in the bottom lane. We had to really get some help there. Oh, I didn't quite get her with the center of it. Alright, we got this. I'm going to put vulnerability on the core. Oh, I got hit by a black arrow, but that's fine. Ladies and gentlemen, there we go. That's it. Good game. Well deserved, heroes. Of course, I could always end it there, but uh, I do believe a lot of people like to see the victory screens to kind of take a look at the final stats, and we shall look at those. Kind of look at the experience gain real quick. Very nice experience, and uh, I like to point off some of the uh, changes here to this screen because this has been updated quite a bit. I don't believe I've talked about this just yet. Um, this is really nice. I like the way they've updated this. You can see your player experience uh, and your character experience all in one go. And if you mouse over it, you can get a breakdown of exactly where this came from. So in this case, my experience was gained from the team experience. Then we get a win bonus, which brought that way up. And then, of course, I have a stim pack active from level 10. Uh, which brought my total experience up. Gold, same way. You can see what you earned on the match, what the victory got you, if there was any holiday bonuses in effect, or if you completed any quests. So gold actually reflects what you've uh, when you've completed a quest. Uh, I believe they added that uh, a patch ago, but it was something that was not existing for a long time, and it's still here. And that's really great to see. So I'm, I'm really happy with those changes. And now we actually have this. We can go into the status screen and we can take a look at all the players. And they reinstated the ability to look at profiles of enemy players. So if we looked at the enemy team just to kind of see what they were dealing with, we can see their Malfurion was a player level of 14. We can even look at um, what his Malfurion level is which is level 2. So they had kind of a gimped Malfurion. He didn't have all his talents, uh, but he did have access to his second ultimate, but his first ultimate is uh, Tranquility, which is the one that's important anyway. Let's look at the... We can look at their Sylvanas. That was a level 40 player, and their Sylvanas is... Oh my goodness, their Sylvanas was a level 11. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, they've upped the character levels to 20. So that's... Wow. It's got a TAS, a Zero Tool, Sylvanas. That's impressive. That's a lot of time. I, I gotta give it to them. Uh, and you can even see in that performance uh, how well they did comparatively. I mean, the best hero damage and the best siege damage for their team, that was the person that was basically trying to carry them as much as possible. Vala was a 40. And they are a level 10 Vala, so I mean, they weren't bad. And you can kind of see that. She chased when appropriate. It's just Sylvanas did so much more. And I think that might kind of show the disparity there a bit. Uh, Raynor. He was, oh man, a level 7 Raynor on their team. Oh, my condolences. And he was a level 5, character level 5. Uh, let's, look at, let's look at the hammer. This hammer I was, I'm was i kind of curious as to. I mean, the, the stats show that this hammer didn't do very well. But part of that was because we focused that hammer. And I knew that's something that had to happen right away. It is a level 40 hammer, which I, I would imagine they would have to be to have that level 10 hammer. We know they're already at least level 10 because of the master skin. So, yep, there it is. Level 10. I can even look at their exact experience level. That's pretty neat. So, there you go. They, they had a couple 40s, but they had some really low players as well. Let's look at our Jaina here. Uh, how did she fare? She was a 40, and her Jaina is only 7. So, she... I gotta say, that's some amazing power to put out there. I mean, just look at that hero damage. 
Uh, well, uh, how did our, how's our Zara tool? That was a 28. He did really well, honestly. Uh, he was helpful when he needed to be. Uh, when I pinged Hammer, he was, was uh, a little hesitant at first, but he charged in and helped me take out Hammer and was able to help secure a lot of kills. So we had a good Zara tool there. Looking at ETC, if you take a look at that profile, that was a 33. And uh, there's ETC is 5. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, it looked like he was doing some work. Uh, Illidan worked really well as well. Uh, player profile, they are 21. And their Illidan is a 4. So uh, you can kind of see, uh, and this is why I'm kind of glad this screen exists, this was a huge disparity between these two, 39 to 11. And part of the problem is, is we only had, we had what, 240s, I believe it was. The other Jaina was... Uh, yeah, she was a 40, so me and the Jaina. They had a couple 40s, but they also had like a level 7. And unfortunately, as you can kind of see, that can set you back a bit. If um, one player is particularly lacking, it really does kind of knock the whole thing off kilter a bit. So it's nice to take a look and be able to see who in your party is doing what. Although it would also be nice to know if anyone's partying up together to know if you were fighting some kind of pre-made or something. But, yeah, you know, can't have everything, I suppose. It used to be from the screen, uh, you can still invite to party from the screen. And it even tells you when they're offline. It used to be it would show you you could request the party. I think that would still be here if you moused over this. Uh, so the buttons are still here, it just looks different. So this is cool. I like to see this. You know what's missing here, though? I just realized this. The objectives are missing. Because that was one thing that the ending screen had that I liked that the in-game screen didn't have was to be able to see who turned in what objectives. So at the end of a match, even though someone's stats might be low and someone might complain about it, uh, you could see who was doing what objectives. And that was one thing. There were some matches where my stats overall were low, but I had an overwhelming amount of the objectives turned in. And in this case, you can see there's no objective tracker. So... Um, while I like the fact that we can see the screen now at the end of the match, I really do miss the objective tracker. I would like to have that added in here. Uh, in match, there is an extra slot if you've got coins or, or whatever kind of uh, objective turn in, but I would actually like to see an objective final counter. That would be really nice. Um, I'm not sure where they would fit it all, because it almost looks like this this screen looks like it's kind of filled its real estate. They'd probably have to widen it a little further, and I'm not sure how well they could do that to fit all resolutions of monitors. Um, they could probably do... They might be able to do something. I don't know. Uh, but I that, that is definitely something I miss, because it's really nice to be able to see that. So, oh well. That's it. I've rambled on enough. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching this episode of Heroes of the Storm with Sylvanas Windrunner, the anti-player build, and I look forward to seeing you again.